Now we will construct the uh, Riemann integral for bounded functions on some interval, closed interval a, b. Yeah, here's the picture. So in blue, light blue, we see the graph of the function and we are subdividing the interval a, b into n equal pieces. So we have a width of, a, of an interval delta x equals b minus a divided by n and um, now what we are doing is what we will do is pick from each interval x i minus 1 so we pick some element x i star from an, an each of the intervals x i minus 1 x i so for the left uh, uh, left endpoint approximation of the surface area, we took x i star equals to x i minus one, and the right endpoint uh, we sampled the point x i star equals x i. So the area enclosed by the ith rectangle over here. is given by its height, which is f x i star, times its width, which is delta x. Now this is just the ith rectangle, the contribution of the ith rectangle. So if we sum up all the contributions of all of the rectangles, then we sum over all i's. So we get f x i star times delta x, and we sum over i equals 1 to n. So Sn is the complete estimate of the surface area enclosed by the graph. And the line x equals a, x equals b, and y equals 0. So now the question is, does the limit for n to infinity of Sn exist? Well, we use the following definition. We will call f the function f integrable over the interval a, b, if the limit of n to infinity as n exists. Yeah, then f will be called integrable over a, b. So if the limit a equals the limit of n to infinity as n, which is merely the limit of the sum of predefined surface areas of rectangles. It's the sum of i equals 1 to n fx i star times delta x, when this one exists. Well, in that case, we will write a equals the integral over ab fx dx. And this is the is called the definite integral of f over a b. I recall that we discussed indefinite integrals, but here we call the definite integral since we now included the a and b. The definite integral of f over a b. And this one is also called the Riemann integral. So if we look at the notation of the Riemann inter integral, or the definite integral, then there's some stuff that can be said. Uh, there's some additional terminology, so there's a couple of things that can be said about this notation. Um, a and B are called the integration bound boundaries. And A is called the lower bound, and B is called the upper bound. Yeah, so this, this holds when A is smaller than B. Yeah, so A is the lower bound and B is the upper bound. And, uh, moreover, the curved, the curved symbol is called the integral sign or summa. And it's not very clear, but it resembles a little bit the summation sign. So, this is the integral sign, and it refers to the underlying limit of sums. Yeah, so which is reflected by this symbol. And uh, the function itself, fx, is called the integrand. So the function.
function f x is the one that we use to define the height of the rectangles. Yeah, it's called the integrand. So this is the function. And uh, finally, we have the closing symbol, which is dx. And uh, of course, we know dx as a kind of differential, but it merely states within this integral, it states uh, which, in, uh, which variable plays a role. So we subdivide the interval a, b, and this is the range of the x variable. And we indicate the variable uh, that we use to integrate the function, so to say.